Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in organic chemistry, we often see synthesis questions where we are required to convert compound A to compound B in a certain number of steps. And one very common synthesis question is involving step-up reaction, which is the increase in the number of carbon by one carbon. So in this video, we want to spend some time to go through organic synthesis via a step-up reaction and we also want to run through some important ideas that we will need to consider for step-up reactions. All right, so we have our example here. We want to convert a uh, two-carbon alcohol, ethanol, to a three-carbon acid, propanoic acid. Now, if you're given synthesis questions, usually the first thing we look out for is, is there any change in the number of carbon? So obviously, if I go and count the number of carbon for the starting guy, I have one carbon, two carbon, and if I look at the product, I have one carbon, two carbon, and three carbon. So obviously, what I will need to do is I will need to increase the number of carbon for this synthesis reaction. So because I know that I need to increase one carbon, then what we usually do is we know that this is a step-up reaction. So I think it is good to write this down because I need to add one carbon. So I know in terms of process, this is a step-up process. And instinctively, what we should be thinking of involving a step-up process or an increase in the number of carbon is to go through nitrile, which is our CN functional group. Because in syllabus, the only way for us to increase the number of carbon by one using reactions and reagents and conditions that is within syllabus is to go through nitrile or a CN. And actually there are two different reactions that we can use to introduce nitrile. So I think before we go through this question proper and we work out the steps involved, it is a good idea for us to go through what are the two reactions that we can use to introduce nitrile. All right, so we have our step up reactions here. Now remember in syllabus, the only way for me to add one carbon is to go through CN, a nitrile functional group. But in syllabus, there are two reactions that I can use to introduce nitrile. So these two reactions are particularly useful for synthesis questions especially if there's an increase in the number of carbon. So the first reaction, it is a nucleophilic substitution of halogenyl alkane. Now we have our example here. If I have a chloroethane, that means a two carbon with a Cl group. Now, if I want to convert the Cl group to a nitrile, then what I will use is I'll use ethanolic NaCN reflux. And what you notice is I am replacing the Cl group with a Cn. So basically the conversion is I remove the Cl, I introduce the nitrile group. So I convert this Cl to a Cn group because this is a replacement reaction, this is a substitution reaction. And if I want to go through substitution, what I will have to do is I will have to convert whatever starting compound that I have, I have to convert it to a halogenyl alkane, then I do a nucleophilic substitution of halogenyl alkane to introduce this nitrile. Now the second way for me to do a step up or to introduce a nitrile, it is to use a nucleophilic addition reaction of carbonyl compounds. So again, we have an example. If let's say I have an aldehyde function group and ethanol, and I want to introduce the nitrile, if I use HCN, trace NACN at a low temperature, 10 to 20 degrees C. Now basically what I'm doing is I'm adding the nitrile to the carbonyl carbon. The C double bond O will open up and the oxygen will become an alcohol functional group. So basically I'm adding hydrogen, adding nitrile. So if I need to introduce the nitrile via addition reaction, then what I'll have to do is I will have to convert the starting compound to a carbonyl compound. Then I do a nucleophilic addition reaction. Now this is important. The step up reaction that we should be using, it is dependent on the functional group that you want to end up getting. It is not dependent on what is the starting function group that you are given. So what we have to do is we have to look at the product and we systematically work backwards and we figure out, should I do this step up reaction via nucleophilic substitution of halogenyl alkane or via nucleophilic addition of carbonyl compound? Now actually these two step up processes, they are not interchangeable. So we don't want to have this impression thinking that I can use either one of them because the total number of functional groups in the product is actually very different because you notice in terms of number of functional group for substitution reaction of halogenyl alkane, this carbon has one functional group. You substitute this one functional group to get this product has also only one functional group. So this is a replacement of functional group. 
Whereas for nucleophilic addition of carbonyl compound, you start off with this carbon having one oxygen. And when you look at the product, this carbon will retain this oxygen. And on top of that, it adds on another functional group. So it is an addition of functional group from one functional group to two functional groups. So what we need to do is we need to look at the product and we decide how many functional groups the product has. So we can reason out whether we should do this step up reaction via substitution or addition reaction. So in general, these two reactions are not interchangeable because if we accidentally use the wrong step up process, then later we need to waste more steps to try to account or rectify this error. All right, now that we know that we need to introduce a nitrile if we are doing step up reaction, but usually questions don't just leave the nitrile as nitrile because it will be too obvious, right? So we also need to be familiar with the reactions of nitrile. What can I convert the nitrile to? So I think it is good to run through the reactions of nitrile very briefly. We have two reactions in general involving nitrile. If I have a CN, what I can do is I can do a reduction. I can convert this to a primary amine, a CH2NH2 group. So this conversion can be easily done using hydrogen in platinum catalyst heat. Or I can also use lithium aluminum hydride in dry ether followed by water at room temperature. Either one of them works fine. Then the other reaction involving nitrile is the hydrolysis of nitrile to carboxylic acid functional group. Now hydrolysis in acidic medium, we can use dilute H2SO4, heat under reflux, or aqueous H2SO4, heat under reflux. Now in terms of importance, hydrolysis is a lot more important and a lot more common in synthesis questions involving step-up reactions. Because if I can convert a nitrile to a carboxylic acid, then I can convert acid to any acid derivatives like esters, acid chlorides, and amines. I can even reduce this carboxylic acid to a primary alcohol. Once I can convert this to a primary alcohol, then I can convert this alcohol to a lot of other functional groups in organic chemistry. So this arm, which is involving the hydrolysis of nitrile to form carboxylic acids, is a lot more useful in organic synthesis. So therefore, it is more popular and more common in questions. All right, so finally, we can come back to our question and we try to target this question. Now, again, what we have is I want to convert a two carbon alcohol to a three carbon acid. The first thing we should recognize is there is an increase in the number of carbon. So this is a step up reaction. I have to go through a nitrile. The next thing we want to do is we want to identify where is my nitrile. If let's say I have this starting guy, this is carbon position one, this is carbon position 2. And if I look at the product, I know that there's an additional carbon. Which of this carbon comes from the nitrile? Is it this first carbon, which is an alkene, the second carbon, which is also an alkene, or this third carbon, which is an acid functional group? Now, if you recall what we have done involving the reactions of nitrile, the question usually won't leave nitrile as it is. You either reduce this to a primary amine or hydrolyze this to a carboxylic acid. So by right, what we should be able to notice is out of these three carbon, which one it is the closest to the nitrile, this carboxylic acid is actually closest to the nitrile. For step up processes, it is a lot easier for us to work backwards. I focus on the product and I work backwards. In organic chemistry, there's a proper term for this. We call this retrosynthesis. So I know that one step back, that means if I move backwards, one step back, this guy actually it is a carbon, carbon, and a nitrile. So now we will be here. And this reaction involving nitrile to carboxylic acid, this is just a hydrolysis. So maybe I'll just write down the type of reaction here plus water, which is a hydrolysis reaction. So now we are at this stage here. The next thing we do is, since I have the nitrile here, what I can do is I can compare this with the starting guy and I see whether should I do this step up process by nucleophilic substitution reaction of halogenic alkane or nucleophilic addition of carbonyl compound. You notice what we have is if this is carbon 1 and this is carbon 2, basically if I look at the product and I map the carbon, this carbon 1 is actually this carbon, this carbon 2 is actually this carbon. In terms of the conversion, what I'm doing is I'm trying to convert this OH group to a nitrile group. So basically what I'm doing is I'm doing a substitution, right? Because I don't want the OH group, I want to replace it with a CN. So in terms of thinking process, if I look at this particular step, basically what I'm doing is 
I'm removing a OH and I want to replace this with a CN. So what type of reaction is this? This is supposed to be a nucleophilic substitution reaction. But unfortunately, we don't have the reagents and conditions to do a direct nucleophilic substitution from alcohol to nitrile. So what we have to do is we have to go through a halogenyl alkene. So I know that this should be done using a nucleophilic substitution of halogenyl alkene. So I can work one step back. So this should be a carbon, carbon, and a chloro group or a bromo group. It doesn't really matter because both of them are halogenyl alkenes. So I know that this reaction, it is a nucleophilic substitution. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm replacing the Cl with a nitrile. So now we are here. Now if I compare this chloroethane, a two carbon chloro group, and a ethanol, two carbon alcohol, so can I do this in one step? You notice we can settle this in one step, right? So from this alcohol to this chloro group, it will just be another nucleophilic substitution. I can do a nucleophilic sub and I can settle this process. So you notice by working backwards, we can systematically reason out based on the product. If there's an added carbon, which carbon is supposed to be a nitrile? Then once I can convert this to a nitrile, then we also have to consider should I do a step up reaction via addition or substitution reaction? Then after that, we can figure out the functional group that will undergo this step up process to give me the nitrile that we want. Then eventually, we can try to link this back to the starting compound. Now for step up process, I think it is good to keep in mind that it is fairly rigid. So the number of variations involving step up process, actually it is pretty limited, which makes it very predictable, very easy for us to figure out. And in syllabus for synthesis question, the maximum number of steps that is required is four steps. So if we can figure out about two steps, which are more or less very predictable, involving step up reactions, then basically we just need to figure out the remaining one or two steps to work out the entire synthesis question because maximum number of steps that we will encounter is just four steps. All right, so once we are done with the planning, then we can answer this question proper. I have an alcohol ethanol, if I want to convert it to a chloroalkane or a chloroethane, I can use anhydrous PCl5 at room temperature or anhydrous SOCl2 at room temperature. Once I have the chloro compound, then I want to do a step up reaction to convert it to a nitrile. So I can use ethanolic NaCN reflux. Once I have this nitrile, I can hydrolyze this nitrile to the acid functional group, which is the product that we want, our propanoic acid. I can do hydrolysis of nitrile using dilute H2SO4 heating under reflux. All right, so that was the discussion involving organic synthesis via a step up reaction. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.